everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of How Hollywood Works. I'm your host, Allegra Malul, and today I'm very excited to have Paul Walter Hauser on my show from I, Tanya. So, Paul, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for hosting me, Beverly Hills High School. Um, it's good to be here. Things are, we, uh, I woke up this morning at 6.30 in the morning to text messages from my family and, and Margo and everybody saying that we got nominated for three Golden Globes, so that's pretty pretty stinking cool pretty yeah it's crazy like you guys yeah. are totally gonna win if you guys haven't seen i tanya yet really it's an amazing film really yeah, well done we're gonna totally win <laughs> hear that get out and disaster artist um no it's it's been a really fun ride and it's not even over yet so we'll see what happens yeah all right so i have a few questions for you some from just just about you and then some about i tanya okay. so um we'll start with the first one when did you have like your realization that you wanted to be an actor? Like, what moment in your life were you like, this is it? Yeah, that's a good question. I think when I was a little kid, I, I saw a performance of Midsummer Night's Dream uh, in my hometown area of like Saginaw, Michigan, or Bay City, Michigan. And I noticed how much fun everybody was having. Everybody was on stage and in the audience. There was the energy that was so, um, contagious and excitable I thought I really wanted to be a part of that but as far as film goes I think seeing the movie A Few Good Men the Rob Reiner Aaron Sorkin film that mm -hmm. was like a moment where I went from kind of liking cartoons and Ernest and Pee Wee Herman and Chris Farley to uh to wanting to know how to be a real actor and uh, and how to have those deep charged exchanges that you see between Demi Moore and uh Jack Nicholson and Tom Cruise and stuff Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, like my moment was I was like four years old in my parents' room and it was like two in the morning, which was the latest I had ever stayed up. Wow. And I remember watching a movie where this little boy finds his like best friend's bones in a shipwreck and I was crying. And then I think that was the moment where I was like, okay, well, that's what I want to do. And then I watched Sweet Life of Zack and Cody on the Disney Channel and I was just like, I have to be on that show. Shout out to the Sprouse Brothers. <laughs> what up? can't tell you apart not our fault it's dna um what is this shipwreck movie with bones what the he what is that? i don't know what i've been trying to look for it you for years it i have no idea what this movie that's is that's gonna be a big moment when you figure out what what it was that moved you at the age of four oh it'll, it'll change my life um all right so next question how many auditions have you gone to and how many parts have you actually gotten whoa you went from slow ball to curveball pretty fast <laughs> there, Allegra. I um, I you know what? I think I moved out here November of '09, and I left for two years because I ran out of money and had to go live with my parents back in Michigan because uh, I was just too young to know how to handle LA. Some people just can't handle LA. Um, and uh, I think on average I might audition like something like I'll make up a number something like. 15 times, 20 times a year, and I've been out here for about six years, so that would be, if my math serves me, like 120 auditions maybe. Wow. To 150 total, probably, somewhere in that arena. And I've booked, I don't know, maybe like maybe like 15 to 20 parts. So it's like a, it's like a I don't know what the math is on that. I just cornered myself. And I'm at a <laughs> high school, so I'm already feeling insecure about all my bad grades when I was in high school. Um, Point being, I think I talked to Mason Gamble, the kid who was in Dennis the Menace, and he went on to do Rushmore for Wes Anderson. I spoke with him once, and he told me he was like one for 50. He's like, you should be booking like one out of every 50 of your auditions, and I'm probably like one out of every 25 or 30, so I'm doing okay. You're doing amazing. Doing amazing, guys. Guys, I'm wearing a tie right now. <laughs> you don't... You don't just wake up and wear a tie for no reason. <laughs> no, yeah, things are good. All right, so what's keeping you or what has kept you motivated to stay in the entertainment industry? Uh, just passion, the fact that I love it. Because there are days that are really tough and, you, you know, there are days where you feel really, really... What's the word? There are days where you feel really small because everything's so big. And there are days where you... Uh, there are days where you question if if you if you're really cut out for it, but I think if you love something, just like a marriage, just like a job, like anything, if you have passion for it and you love it, you just you stay the course and you keep doing it. And thankfully, I'm I'm still here doing it. 
Yeah, yeah. that's great. Um, what is your dream role slash movie, and who would you want to co-star with you, and who would you want to direct it? Whoa. It's a loaded dream question. Dream role. <laughs> um, I told somebody in, in an interview recently, I really want to, I want to be in one of these superhero movies, mostly because they pay well, but <laughs> I want to be in one of these movies and uh, play like a villain or a sidekick, but I, I would love to do The Penguin for, for Batman, because I have a take on it already that I've shown Margot. And some people, I've totally been bothering them, be like, yo, yo, give me that penguin roll. Give me that <laughs> penguin roll in that Justice League 3 or whatever. Uh, so I want to do that. I would love to play John Belushi or Chris Farley in a biofilm. I, I know I know how to do that. And uh, I have an idea about like wanting to play Chris Penn's character from Reservoir Dogs, uh, who's like this mob boss's kid who sets up the heist at the jewelry store in Reservoir Dogs. So I would love to play him in like an FX original series or something. Um, who would direct? I have no idea. But, um, but there's so many good directors out there. I just worked with Spike Lee uh, for four weeks in New York, and, and that was a dream come true, getting to work with a really famous director who's got his own style and his own uh, big reasons for why he does what he does, and it was fun getting to play in that world for a little while. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, um, my dream role is probably a superhero movie, too. Oh, of course. I mean, we all want to do it. Everyone has to do it you at some totally point. You could totally pull off some Lois Lane, right? Lois Lane? Or do you have some Catwoman? Am I underestimating? I mean, no, Lois Lane is such a huge compliment. I love Superman, okay. so. <laughs> yeah, you be Lois, I'll be Penguin, and then we'll get somebody to interview us on How Hollywood Works. By the way, if you're watching How Hollywood Works, please use the hashtag HHW. Let's not waste this moment. <laughs> get the get the uh, get the party started on the Twitter. You're coming up with the hashtags before I do. Come on, guys. <laughs> Got to start tweeting for this show. Um, all right. So, uh, where were you when you so now we're going to I, Tanya. Okay. Um, where were you when you first heard about the attack on Nancy Kerrigan, and how did you feel? Uh, I was. It was November thirteenth, nineteen ninety. I was at a Dairy Queen. I was wearing a purple shirt. I'm kidding. I have no <laughs> idea. I was a little kid. I was born in 1986. Uh, I was like seven years old when it happened, I think, or, or eight years old. So I, I, I have visions of what that looked like, but I don't really have any deep memories. I just know that like Ricky Lake and Oprah Winfrey and uh, you know Maury Povich, like all these sort of trashy, simple-minded you know afternoon talk shows, were discussing it to death. And it was like the story of the year until OJ, and then OJ until Monica and Bill. And in the 90s, it was just a crazy perpetual thing of seasonal <laughs> stories. Uh, and this was one of them. And I'm so thrilled that they made the movie because it could have been really bad. Like it could have been a really stupid, pointless movie. And instead, Steven Rogers wrote this amazing script that was about real people and real problems. And, and, uh, and I think our cast really, really nailed it as well. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the movie, like, completely, I mean, for me, I had never heard about the attack until yeah. I heard that Margot and Sebastian were doing this movie. And um, when I looked into it, like, online, I didn't see much about Tanya's life beforehand. Like, I had no idea she was abused her entire life. No. So I just thought, oh, what a crazy woman. Like, why would you do that? But now yeah. that I've seen the movie, it's really opened up my eyes and I think it's opening up a lot of other people's too yeah. and I think there's a lesson to be learned for everybody who sees the movie hopefully young and old is that you are sort of a product of your environment sometimes so if you surround yourself with really selfish acidic dim-witted people like she did and you know it's not her fault she was surrounded by those people but like you are the uh you eventually sort of become the collective of the people you surround yourself with so I think in her case a uh, bad company led to some really bad decisions. Yeah. yeah, that was really unfortunate, but she still, you know, she powered through. She did. To the very end. I got to meet her at the uh, L.A. premiere like a week ago, and that was crazy. Was that your first time meeting her? Oh, yeah. It's not like we've had a lot of uh, moments where we could meet her. She's kind of holed up living her own real life and being a mother, and, and she finally stepped back out into the spotlight, which was cool. Yeah, um... So, what was it like to be on set for I, Tonya? Like, how long did you guys shoot? What were the hours? Yeah. All that. We, it was, I think it was, it was not much. I think it was a 31-day shoot. I was in Atlanta for about six or probably seven weeks. 
and um, and it was a joy. You know, there are days where I don't know how much the people watching know. I don't know if you know how Hollywood works, <laughs> but uh, there are days where you're holed up in your trailer or wherever or a room uh, for four to five hours, and you're just waiting to go to set. So it's you know, you bring a book or you get your podcast going or a playlist or you take a snooze or you or you grill grill and drill the material in the script. And uh, it depends what, what your day is, what you're doing. There were days where I had no dialogue and you just get to show up and kind of have fun. And then there are days where I have this scene with uh, Sebastian Stan where we kind of have to go at it in this kitchen uh, talking about the attack on Tanya, or, uh, Nancy Kerrigan. And that day was really tough because I really love Sebastian. We became buddies on this movie, but we kind of had to like, we kind of had to butt heads and get ugly for for a couple hours doing that scene. Uh, so some days are easier than others, but it was it was a fun shoot. It was good. That's cool. Yeah, that scene. I mean, from your Instagram posts because you've been posting about Sebastian all week. Yeah. Um, after the watching that scene. Crush. <laughs> the stand, stand the man. No, sorry. What were you um, yeah, watching that scene, I was just like, wow, I can't believe that these two men are like, you guys looked like you wanted to kill each other. Or he yeah. looked like he wanted to kill you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he still sometimes wants to kill me, <laughs> depending on what I do. No, we, it, was, it was a fun scene. And there's some really good moments between us, and, and hopefully we're going to be working together again at some point. Yeah. yeah, it'd be really awesome to see you guys in a movie again. Um, so now we're talking about favorite scenes. What was your favorite scene to film? Favorite scene to film was probably the one in the kitchen because even though it was the most difficult for he and I, it was the one where we're like, okay, we're actors. We're really going to go for it. We're really going to try to push each other's buttons and, uh, and push the boundaries and see what we can get out of it. And there were a couple different versions we saw edited and some were more comedic and some were really dark and there were, scene, there were takes where we slapped the crap out of each other and kind of he had a scene where he choked me a little too hard, where he oh. pushed me up against the wall, and it was, like, very alarming. But it was, I was glad he did it, because if you see the look in my eyes during the take, it's real, you know? What's happening is real. We're recreating those real emotions. So um, maybe the hardest scene, but definitely also my favorite scene, yeah. All right. Um, so what can you personally take from this experience of filming I, Tanya? Uh, hopefully gratefulness, because I'm such an expectant uh, person where there's so much that I want to do. I want to direct. I want to win an award someday. I want to travel. I want to work with all these people I love. And it's uh, you have to stay grounded and grateful and know that, you know, if you get a serial commercial, it's statistically a miracle, let alone get to work with the likes of these people in a movie nominated for Best Picture at the Golden Globe. So, um I hope I take away gratefulness, and I hope I, I just stay sharp and, and have learned a lot from working with really brilliant people, from the director to the wardrobe person, Jennifer Johnson, who did our costumes. Uh, I was surrounded by so many smart people uh, that it, it makes you smarter. It makes you better. Yeah. Um, so what memory from behind the scenes sticks out to you the most? Um, the night we went to a rodeo bar and Margot bought shots for everybody and as she was about to pass them out some local from atlanta jumped on top of our table and tried to jump on margo oh. and like tackle her i think he was drunk or he was trying to get on tmz or something but as he jumped toward her to tackle her and margo had been having some neck problems at the time because she had whiplash from all the skating uh I, gra I see him jump and I grab Margo without even thinking and I pull her into me like in a hug while she has a tray of shots and the booze just went all over my new suit <laughs> and I'm just holding her, gripping her, making sure she didn't get hit and the guy ran away and there was this moment where she just looks at me and I'm just soaked in booze and we're just staring at each other like this and I was just like so grateful that this guy didn't hurt our lead actress but it was also one of those weird moments where I was like totally just saved Margot Robbie's <laughs> life. No big deal. Not a big deal. I just <laughs> saved Margot Robbie from this crazy local. And that was, uh, that's one of many funny, crazy behind the scenes stories. I don't think I've told that one yet. So that's a Beverly Hills High School exclusive. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yes. So honored. Um, Hashtag HHW. <laughs> uh, was it hard for you to play Sean Eckhart since you didn't have much freedom to make the character your own? Because you had to base it off of him and his right. personality. Um, 
It was pretty easy to play him because I know how to be delusional because I think I'm, you know, I wanted to be an actor and I'm from a small town in Michigan. You have to be a little delusional just to try to become an actor. And, um, and Sean's, Sean's uh, personality deals heavy with delusion and loneliness and a lot of things that are actually pretty commonplace in most people, uh, even the ones who look most secure and happy. So uh, playing those emotions weren't that hard, and that's the bulk of who he is. I would say you kind of have to get into this mode, though, because I'm a very loud, sort of chatty, excitable person, and I kind of had to play him very, like, kind of, like, dopey and mopey and, like, Eeyore or something. Like, I, I kind of had to play him drugged out and sort of uncomfortable, and I did this thing with my hands where when I would explain things, I always had it like the penguin or, like, <laughs> karate chops. So there were all these little consistencies I had to keep mindful of, like, oh, don't be yourself in this scene. Like, make sure you're putting on the body work of, of who Sean is. Yeah, did you get to meet him and speak to him? No, he passed away 10 years ago, and I never found out how. They just said natural causes. But um, I tracked down the guy who turned him into the FBI, a guy by the name of Eugene Saunders, who's a, a professor at a Bible college in Portland. And I mined him for some information, which was very helpful. Wow, that's... That's so cool. I know, I think Sebastian said he got to talk to Jeff. Yeah, Sebastian talked to Jeff. Margo talked to uh, Tanya. They were all very uh, involved in some way. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I know that for Margo playing Tanya, like, everyone knows who Tanya Harding is. Everyone know how she, knows how right. she acts. And Margo, obviously, she's an Australian, like, supermodel. And she's coming down here to play, like, this, like, abused woman who right. was just trying her best. And had to do an accent the entire movie like that's crazy to me well, she may look like a supermodel but she is she's up there with Pacino and Denzel and Viola Davis and she's gonna be one of the greats she's only 27 so it, it'll be exciting to watch her career oh yeah I mean I already consider her yeah. high up there top in the heap top definitely the heap. um so a major theme I guess in I Tonya is that Tanya never really felt like she was loved unless she won. Um, I think the most famous line was, America, everyone wants someone to love, everybody also wants someone to hate. Yeah. Um, do you think that now she feels loved? I think she feels loved by her husband and kids. I think she's truly content with her life and the, and the loved ones around her. I think something that I... Oh, I just hit the mic. Boom. Uh, <laughs> something that I feel that I'm sure she felt is I don't always need to be loved but I always fight to be understood and especially as young people as teenagers like how badly do you want to be understood because there are so many preconceived notions and assumptions about what it is to be a teenager so I I think now she's going to be understood and that's loved or not it, it's probably feeling really good to to have your story ironed out for the whole world yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was the last question. That was the last. Good. I think we made it just in time. We didn't miss class. We didn't no miss class. No one gets in trouble. Good. <laughs> well, thank you for hosting me. I don't get many interviews because this is all new to me. So this was this was my Kimmel, my Colbert, uh, Allegra, and how Hollywood works. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for God coming. God bless you. Happy holidays. All right. So hope you guys go see I, Tonya in theaters. It's out now. Yeah. at the Arclight and the Landmark, and it's yeah. going to be everywhere in January. So go watch it, and I'll see you guys next week on How Hollywood Works. You better see it. I'm going to be really offended. Okay? <laughs> Don't offend here. Paul. I came all the way here, you guys. <laughs> all right, bye, guys. Bye.